started. There we go. Hello, people of the internet. Welcome to Unleash TV, a weekly show where we talk about the news and reviews from UnleashedPhones.com and around the world. Um, I'm Judge. I'm I'm joined by my uh, usual co-host, uh, Alvin. What's up? How's it going? How's Singapore? Hey. And we have Atif dropping by uh, today. Hey guys. What's up, Atif? Remember me, sure. <laughs> Um you know who we don't remember? Yash, because he's still in Narnia, and we have no idea what's going on with him. <laughs> and one of these days, we need to get him back. Um, all right, so so this huge was a pretty week huge week. week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, huge for a lot of reasons, but we're going to try and focus on the. Well, it it's it's not as depressing. Yeah, we're we would talk, talk about, about the, the mobile. plane, but then we are not an aviation photo show. Oh my so. God! Let's not. Yeah, let's never do that because it would be very de- depressing. Um, let's talk yeah, about one crash in this plane. Oh goodness! Uh, let's talk about Microsoft. Their their own kind of crash. Uh, they're how do I how do I explain what they're doing now? All right. So they are taking control of uh, the part of Nokia that they bought, and the way that they are taking control of Nokia is by reducing its size by half. So Nokia uh, is a phone maker that some of you may know. It was once one of the largest. Uh, makers of smartphones and feature phones. And now, Microsoft's plan for Nokia seems to be to reduce them to something that is just about as big as the people responsible for doing the surface. That's how I kind of try to understand it. It's a downsizing because now they kind of want Nokia to play to the larger strategy that Microsoft has, the whole cloud first, mobile first thing. Uh, instead of really trying to win in smartphones, they will purely uh, try to focus on doing whatever Microsoft wants them to do, which is to maybe put out two phones a year. Well, how much of a surprise is that really? It's not that's surprising. True. I, I, that's true. I have to admit, I wasn't surprised. I was shocked, but I wasn't surprised because I kind of expected um, Microsoft to do this from the start. As soon as I, this, this was what everyone's problem was... Uh, with Microsoft buying Nokia, everyone thought that okay, now that Microsoft's going to buy Nokia, they're going to do what they do to every company that they acquire, which is completely so. Incompetent. Let's just summarize what's going to happen. First, uh, Microsoft is laying off about eighteen thousand people across the whole company, right? Uh, over the next year, which is a large number, it's the largest in the company's history. However, twelve and a half thousand of the eighteen thousand are going to be employees who came from the Nokia acquisition. So that means that half of the people who came over to Microsoft from Nokia are let go. Manufacturing assets that Nokia has, like factory workers, factories, factory equipment, uh, will be dramatically downsized, and they will be concentrating their product development in two offices uh, in Finland. And um, this week, uh, the Finnish finance minister said that Microsoft had betrayed Finland, which is quite a huge statement when a company can betray an entire country. Uh, The devices unit will focus on low-end Windows phones in the near term, which is just like every other Windows phone OEM that just jumped on, which means that Windows phone, for those of us who love Windows phone, we will be just surrounded with a cesspool of low-end shitty crap pieces of junk <laughs> that will come out in the next year. Um, Nokia X is dead. Nokia X, the phone that everyone agrees is a disaster, even people on the inside uh, agree it's a disaster, uh, <laughs> is dead after seven months from its initial amount of announcement at MWC in 20, at the start of this year. Uh, app development programs for Nokia X will cease, which means that Nokia store for the Nokia X will probably be shuttered, and no new features or significant software upgrades will come along, because the product line is going to go into maintenance mode for 18 months, which actually puts the, the, the Nokia X line as uh, something that will pass away at the same time as Symbian support will end, because 18 months from now will be in 2016. Uh, Nokia Asher and S40 is dead as well. Um, those uh, cheap, super cheap feature phones and Asher phones that Nokia actually sells in great volumes uh, will be killed off, so there will be no more cheap feature phones. Uh, we have quite a few opinions about that. Uh, we've had uh, 
huge, huge debate uh, this week as well with people on the wonderful social network known as Twitter. Um, Mixed Radio's future, well, in the notes I say it's uncertain, but now as we've grown to know more, uh, the plan is to spin it off as a separate entity. Uh, perhaps they'll be get bought by another company, or they will basically be decoupled from the whole Microsoft thing. So they will become a separate product altogether, but with close ties to Windows Phone, uh, just like the here maps arrangements, if you will. Um, so in that sense, that makes all components of not just original services layer gone. <laughs> Uh, if you have seen the, can I interrupt? If you've seen the movie District 11, uh, there's a guy who gets alien DNA in him, and the scientists get really into him that they take him on a table and they just take apart all parts of his body, just take the heart here, take this there. That's exactly what Microsoft has done to. Yeah. yeah, very much. Um, should we start with the memos now before yes. we? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's start with, with Nadella's so memo. There were three first. memos. One's from Satya Nadella. Uh, I managed to practice saying his name correctly. Uh, he wrote a memo. Just days after he wrote the first memo hinting that drop cuts were to come, uh, there's a memo from Stephen Elop, who's currently the leader of hardware at Microsoft. And there is another memo that wasn't exactly released, but The Verge kind of leaked it from Joe Harlow, which was the previous smartphone hit. So, let's start in Nadella. <sighs> let's, uh, let's talk about that. Um, the, according to, well, the Nadella memo is basically a press release that was sent out to everybody. We published it on the site. Um, and that's where he de details out that there will be 18,000 jobs cut from Microsoft. Um, his, the, 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 the problem that I'm having with, actually, you know what, we'll talk about strategy at the end of all the memos. Yeah. At, the, at the end of all the memos, but, pro but according to what he says, he he's trying to. What is he trying to do? <laughs> okay. So okay, so like what what now, does Microsoft I, is a huge company that does a ton of things. Well, some are successful, some are not. Um, but basically, what he's trying to do is to reposition Nokia as this division inside Microsoft that has a very limited responsibility. It's not necessarily to connect the next billion people anymore. Um, what they are now sort of trying to do is to make <clears throat> first party hardware that will quote unquote be, represent the best Windows Phone experience. That sounds like the Nexus program. That sounds like um, the Surface yeah, for Windows. Yeah. That it's just can someone remind me how big is the Nexus program? It's tiny. How big is Surface? Tiny as well. <laughs> and so Nokia will be as tiny now uh, going forward with, with these uh, changes because they are no longer about making phones uh, that people like. They are now about trying to distill Microsoft software into a piece of hardware that can go on shelves. That's all. Yeah. The only good thing in his memo was that they there was that he stated that they are canning the Nokia X uh, lineup, which again is another controversial title uh, uh, thing to happen because a lot of people thought that the Nokia X, yeah, the whole Microsoft okay. running on AOS thing would eventually. Wrong. That crunch yeah. got that wrong. Um, you know, if you bought a Nokia X, the Nokia XL or the upcoming Nokia X2, you will be stuck with a product that's going to die in 18 months. Mm. What he's saying is that they have more product designs for Nokia X coming along in the pipeline. <laughs> but I they will cannot, not, Yeah, but yeah, they will now uh, refocus them to Windows run Phone. Windows Phone instead of Android. And given how similar Windows Phone hardware uh, specs and Android hardware specs are nowadays, that's quite simple for them to do. It's basically a swapping out of OS. So, so Nokia X will become the budget Lumias and Lumias will become mid-range yeah. and higher? So, so these Nokia X designs, we will never hear about them under the Nokia X banner because they'll be called Lumias. We will, in fact, we'll never know what uh, started off as a Nokia X phone or what started off as a Lumia phone because um, because there will be no reference to Nokia X ever again. Um, mm. And in addition, given that uh, if you look at uh, Nokia X and you look at the Lumia 630, they're basically the same. I mean, um, 
on a basic level, they have different screens, sure, but they're basically the same in terms of buttons, in terms of screen uh, resolution, in, in terms of all of those things that matter. Processor, they're basically the same. So it will not really, it doesn't come as a surprise that they are doing this either. Nokia X always seemed to be an outlier that didn't fit in anywhere and was just a complete disaster among every all circles. Uh, Artif just gone. <laughs> uh, so, uh, it's really, that's what it is, I guess. No one will miss the Nokia X. Seriously, take it from me. Mm. Um, it's, it, it, it's really unfortunate, but let's, uh, let's move on to... Now, <laughs> Elos, uh, memo is the... Memo. Is, now, that, that, uh, was the, that was flat out... Uh, did you read the... Did you all read uh, Elo's memo? It was... Yes. Flat out without emotion at all. It was just like... It started with hello there. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> a, hello there. Um, I'm firing half of you. Uh, if you have any questions, get back to me at the end of the week. It was complete MBA speak. Yeah. I know, right? Uh, you, you mentioned the strategic realignment in like the fourth page or the fifth page, as if so. Oh yeah, one other, another thing. And I mean, that was cool. And so, okay, so Elop says right that. Uh, that not here. It's not the team creating hardware that showcases the finest of Microsoft's digital work and digital life experiences. That means nothing, and we will be the confluence of the best of Microsoft's applications, OS, and cloud services. It also means nothing because isn't that exactly what Nokia was before? I mean, maybe. you know, <laughs> maybe. Um, so, and uh, he says things about uh, the hardware business of phones being uh, an M in itself, while at yeah. Microsoft, uh, all the devices are intended to embody the finest of... Uh, uh, yeah, the know. finest of Microsoft. I'm like... The I'm finest like, of see, Microsoft. See, like, see, so you, you know, is literally trying to say that in the past, this isn't the finest of Microsoft's digital work and digital life experiences. This isn't the confluence of the best of Microsoft's applications and OS and cloud services. They are literally now going to start doing that now. Um, it's just... <clears throat> no, another memo was very long and con contained a lot of nonsense speak. But Elon's memo, I would argue, contains even more nonsense speak because um, <laughs> he says lots of things without really saying anything at all. Um, as usual, as usual, that's the style. <laughs> that is the style. Yep. And so, the thing that we can uh, that we can take away from his memo is that uh, first there will be more low end Windows phones because only low end Windows phones have been selling well, um, anywhere close to well. Look. 12 million Lumia 520s isn't exactly a lot um, when you measure that up against the tons of iPhones and the tons of Galaxies that are sold. So <clears throat> that's Windows Phone's bigger success story, which tells you how big Windows Phone is. We And then uh, he also mentions that we will right-size our manufacturing operations to align to this new strategy, <clears throat> which is... um. Which is basically downsizing, isn't it? Uh, right size, downsize. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when he said we plan to right size our manufacturing <coughs> operations, I couldn't help thinking, wow, this is this is typical Elop. <laughs> um, so who says, who says right size? <coughs> I mean, who says that? Anyway. So, the one thing I want to point out about this is that. Nokia used to base its strength on its manufacturing capabilities. That's the reason why they kind of won in the first place. That's the reason why Samsung is winning now, because they have all this manufacturing power that will allow them to make a huge variety of products that appeal to every price point, at every screen size that people want. So for them to say that, okay, we just bought, Microsoft just acquired a phone maker. Uh, that not only has a lot of talent in design and in you know hardware because that's what HTC has. It also has a lot of manufacturing plants. It also has a lot of manufacturing capabilities. Factory workers who have experience doing this stuff. Equipments that took a lot of money to invest in. Um, 
and all that is supposedly going away. What I don't understand is why you buy Nokia. In to get rid of it, basically, to get Just rid of IP. what, to Just get rid of what it made, it, it's it, it, where it, of all the things that make Nokia capable, and essentially uh, de- reduce them to being none other than an HTC level phone maker. No offense to HTC, but HTC is so dependent on everyone else in order to make phones because they don't have their own uh, manufacturers. They don't have their own components. And all of HTC stuff has to come from outside. And now, it sounds like Nokia is going to be pretty much the same way, because with all the factories gone, and I assume that they're going to go to uh, somewhere in China or somewhere in Vietnam and contract someone else to build their phones to, to for them, it's, it's just... Um, difficult to understand. Why make the purchase in the first place in order to just cut it as its legs? <laughs> um, so uh, that's uh, that's Elot's memo. And then yeah. there's the, the leaked Joao. That's Nutella's memo. No, that, that was all Elop and, oh, and yeah. Nutella together. Um, then there's Joe Harlow. Joe Harlow was the most sneaky <laughs> memo that actually detailed out that they are going to sell off Mixed Radio. Um, the Mixed Radio team was very, very quick to explain that they are um, going to spin off into an independent service. They're just looking for investors right now. It's really sad, though, because the Mixed Radio oh, team was one of the most dedicated, I think. Yeah. And from what and from what I saw from Twitter, it seemed like they had no idea of what was going on. <laughs> yeah. Um, I... <laughs> But I, I, I thought that there were, there were two contradicting views. There was one, there was one tweet that was deleted very quickly that said, "Oh, we're not going anywhere," and then it was deleted. Uh, but then there's also another tweet that said, that kind of indicates that they knew this was coming along, and that's why most of the mixed radio team were looking for investors. And I don't know. Um, the mixed radio, the way mix, if you've you if you've used a Lumia phone, you probably know what Mixed Radio is. If you haven't, it's a really convenient st- music streaming service it's that you have. I love it. It's my favorite service on my phone for sure, on any phone for that matter. To be very honest, um, s- s- the way it works is really simple too. You ha- you ca- you just push play. It plays music and it studies your profile and um, you you can free. only skip a song six times, but it's completely free, no ads. But no now, accounts. yeah, no accounts now anymore. Uh, but now everything's going to change. Every, they're going to they're going to need to figure out some kind of. In. They will mm-hmm. have to uh, find outside investment to keep it growing. It's going to have to become just like Spotify, uh, because with Spotify there's a free tier where you will have ads, and and the paid tier which removes the ads, and that's how they kind of make their money. But uh, with Mixed Radio. Is going to be the same way, and that's just kind of sad because I really enjoyed Mixed Radio. I really yeah, liked the fact that it was free. It just, it, you know, you know. Uh, remember, remember, <laughs> I said this would happen because I was like, oh, you know, Microsoft. And, and here's the, here's yes, you said you called it. I, I called it. I you called, called it. it. But here's the thing: Mixed Radio was always a selling point for Lumia phones. It's one of the brightest spots of a Windows Phone experience. Why would you get a Windows Phone anyway? Xbox Music. <laughs> It's not available in anywhere that's not called the US and maybe a few <laughs> European countries. Xbox yeah. music is irrelevant. Microsoft is irrelevant in terms of uh, its media offerings outside of a few select countries. That is what makes me so upset about it. It's that Mixed Radio is going to become uh, a separate service that's its own thing, its own company, right? And it's going to have to make a profit like any other business, uh, it, like any other music streaming business, in fact. Mm-hmm. The thing it's is... Gonna be, it's going to be very tough, though, for them. Yeah, and the thing is, there are so many music streaming services right now. So many. Beats Music, which was the latest one to kind of show up, has gone nowhere. It has just mm-hmm. been bought by Apple. Um, and uh, it, it's insane that they would cut Mix Radio off like that instead of finding another way to integrate Mix Radio in with 
what they already have in terms of uh, the Xbox Music offerings because it's not like Xbox Music is a complete replacement for Mixed Radio. It's not like there is so much synergy that makes Mixed Radio completely redundant. Xbox Music is still a very fledgling service. It's still very new and it still has not managed to really go anywhere. Uh, and what's, what's also interesting is that we have to remember that Nokia Mixed Radio was once Nokia Music which has access to a huge library of music um, and no doubt they also have various deals with various co um, countries around the world and recording labels. Uh, the, for example, in India, they had at one point they had a bigger library than I, I, iTunes Music wasn't even around till last year in India. Um, so it's really silly. I don't know, man. You know, this, this, this something like this really does um, confuse me because I have no idea what Microsoft is doing. Uh, it's really we, by Nokia down the drain. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's just it's just sad. Uh, the uh, we we should also talk about how the development and um, well everything about the Asha S40 and yeah. Nokia X phones. Well, we already spoke about the Nokia X phones, but the Asha phones. Uh, this is all detailed in Halo's uh, memo. Um, development of the Asha and series 60, uh, series 40 phones are now in a maintenance mode, meaning that they won't get any feature additions, uh, but they will be getting like you know if there's a Emergency software update that's needed, you might get that software update, yep. but you won't be getting um, any. Uh, Basically, it will die the features. same way that Symbian did. Yeah. Um, yep. It's it's insane. Um, it's just insane. And uh, this is speaking from someone who is in a very in a country that has one of the highest smartphone penetrations in the world, and I still think that there is a place for feature phones. Um, there is. It's insane. Who's going to make feature phones now? <laughs> exactly. And, and the thing is, Nokia's feature phones were really popular. Nobody would buy any other feature phones. And Nokia's feature phones... I guess phones. we're going to have to buy Samsung Rex 90s. Oh, oh my god, it's Samsung Rex. Do they still sell those? I wonder what happened to those. <laughs> Yikes. Um, so, now this is the thing. If, uh, I've been traveling a lot uh, to like Delhi and back to Manipal and then back to, to Bombay and all that. So I've been going through a lot of airports. Uh, one thing I like to do when I go to airports or you know I'm in a new city, I like to look at. I generally like to look, look at what phones people are using anyway. But the airport is kind of like the best place to see what phones are relevant at the moment in that area. Um, I saw a lot of. I've seen a lot of E71s. I've seen a lot of N97s. Even now, still. Wow. Um, I know. I feel like giving them a hug. Poor, poor guy. I was like, oh, you poor thing. Let me give you a hug. <laughs> Um, but I see a lot of S40 phones, maybe not the new Asha touchscreen phones, um, not the 501 series or the, the or older ones, ones. But the older ones with the keypads, those are very important because some people, a lot of people I know, a lot of business people I know buy these S40 phones as a backup, just, yeah. as, just to have something that has battery life that they only need to charge For once. For travel, they're very useful. Travel. So, and... <laughs> uh, a lot of people don't realize how important these phones are. Uh, even if, even if, just for example, if if Microsoft does release a Lumia that's like fifty dollars, okay, that's really cheap. It's not gonna have the kind of battery life that this phone. And has. it will need a data plan to do anything. Yeah, um, it will need a data plan to do anything. These phones don't. They just you switch them on and they and they're active. They can use them right from the get-go. Uh, what, what do you think, Arthur? If you're, you're in Bombay, have you seen a lot of people using these uh, S40 phones, Asher phones at all? Honestly, I've seen a lot of those people have moved on to cheap Android phones. Really? I've been in Max mobile phones. Mm. I mean, my my milkman has what, my watch videos all the time. So yes, because they do it. Jumping on the they all know you. Phone. And you're like the the, the <laughs> this this but, is the guy that got me switched to Android. So let's not pay attention to that <laughs> opinion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But yeah, you're right. There are people with the E71s and all still around. So CJ had a huge fight with uh, someone on Twitter about this, and I was kind of holding off because I don't <laughs> want I didn't want to get into it. Uh, yeah. Especially with yeah. a plane crash going on, I just didn't think that it was appropriate to argue about yeah. feature phones when. People uh, and when people just died, but yeah. um, but yeah, okay. So now let let me say what I think. Feature phones are important because they are super cheap. Um, not 
they, it will still be a while before smartphones become as cheap as feature phones can be. Nokia is the only company that was left building feature phones, as I mentioned, and I always had this nagging feeling that one day it will go away. And when it goes away, the world will be poorer for it. Microsoft just hurt the world here because um, feature phones are really important for connecting people who otherwise would have no access to cellular phones at all. We're not talking about smartphones. We're not talking about internet access. When we are looking at the whole idea of feature phones, they can connect people in a in just areas where you would not ever imagine if you live in the city and if you have a lot of money and you would never consider yourself ever getting a feature phone again because you can afford a smartphone with the accompanying internet plan and you don't mind um, and you have enough knowledge and enough uh, uh, expertise with technology to sign up for all the accounts that you need in order to get your smartphone to do its thing. But feature phones can be had for 20 bucks. You can get a feature phone that can make phone calls and send text messages as a keypad and a screen for $20. And that's something that smartphones cannot do right now. You will never get a smartphone for $20. I know they are kind of coming, but even if they do... But they not for a long, long time. Yeah. They will still um, not be as good as feature phones because they will need charging up very often. They'll, they'll need to connect to the internet for they'll sure. They'll need to connect to the internet. Because and when you're talking about a village somewhere in, uh, in, in the world, you may not have internet access. You may not have stable electricity. In a war zone, you may not have stable electricity. You may not have internet access. But you may have a cell tower. You may have be able to connect to a network that will allow you to communicate with others. The thing is, yeah. You know, you know, as you said, Al, uh, Nokia's goal was connecting the next building. It was Nokia's goal was connecting people. That was that was it. Um, as Harlow says in her memo, um, whereas the successful hardware was the goal of Nokia, delighting our customers with Microsoft platform services and applications through that's hardware a sucky vision. is our that goal. That is a sucky vision. That is having but no that, vision at all. That is Microsoft's goal. It's to delight customers. With Microsoft yeah, platforms no and, and apps through hardware. So Microsoft really does not care about connecting people at all. Um, they don't give a crap. And uh, by the way, the most successful phones that Nokia ever built are all feature phones. <laughs> Those are the ones that so in the most numbers, more successful than any smartphone. Essentially, by killing connecting people, Microsoft has killed Nokia. Finally, it has yeah. happened. Uh, this is the and, end of Nokia. And here's where we can start talking about it. Um, <laughs> let's 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 let's, go, let's talk about how, how do you feel that you know half of all the ex Nokia people you are know going? because you know because I I feel like like you know like people like people like you are the imaging head for pure view. Um, the I, I remember speaking with the the product manager for the um, N95, who was also the product manager for the E71, uh, for those really awesome metal phones. Uh, these are people who are really important, and I don't think Microsoft realizes that because they're going to come in with their macho, you know, American kind of, uh, oh, we need to make a phone that razzle dazzles people, um, and and people who come around and say, hey, let's put a 41 megapixel camera into a phone. Those people aren't going to be around Nokia anymore. Um, I hope that these people move to a company like, like you know, one of Nokia's peer review guys has already gone over to Apple. Um, I, I wouldn't mind if more of them go on over to Apple yeah. um, or even HTC so or any company. This is, uh, this is just the latest in a long line of blows that has afflicted Nokia in the past four years, ever since they went Windows Phone. Um, in fact, prominent people like uh, like Damon Dinning, who did many pure view cameras, uh, and and was basically all the camera wizardry left quite a while ago. Um, but people have still stayed on, and people have still put in a lot of effort, even up in the past year, to make sure that um, that Nokia actually finds some level of success. They have tried very hard, and and for now, uh, to be cut off like that, uh, for half of them to to be shown the door 
it's just almost an insult. Um, I, I, in fact, I just hope that um, that over here, um, the the people who work for Nokia or Microsoft devices in Singapore and and will not be too heavily affected by this because it's it's really it's really sad uh, all the time when such a thing happens. And it must be it must be terrible to be an Nokia employee who has been through all of this because you know with the with the first with the <laughs> let's let's rewind all the way to when um, the the MIMO team was like go oh, then the Migo team was like go oh, then the Symbian team was like go oh. uh, <laughs> and then you know you 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 everybody was waiting for these transitions to stop because as as I remember when S60 was transitioning into S60 version five you we were waiting for that transition to finish. Uh, S60 version 5 decided to become Symbian version 1 or whatever. <laughs> then we were waiting for Symbian the transition 3. to Symbian 3 to finish. Then we were waiting for the transition to Migo to actually happen. But that didn't happen. And instead, we were waiting for the transition to Windows Phone to happen. Then we waited for the transition for Nokia to become Microsoft. And now that transition has finally hit a dead end. It's hit a wall slat. <laughs> and... Um, it must really suck to be a Nokia employee who's been through all of that. I've actually seen uh, one or two Nokia employees that I follow um, kind of yeah. give up hope and tweet that they're looking for better opportunities now, which isn't surprising because they've been through a ride. Holy crap. To be through all that, to to go to work every day knowing that you could be fired for, like, for like anything, that just sucks <laughs> because because there's clearly no direction that nobody feels safe in in. And Microsoft. the thing is, with reports that uh, that phone high-end phones are getting cancelled and this and all that, there's it just seems like there's a lot of there's just a huge amount of turmoil going on right now at at, at Microsoft and and at Nokia and it's just another huge transition. Right. Um. This this whole thing with even now it, the transition is still in progress and there's still going to be shakeups as we as we go along. Um, it's just been a never-ending transition. <laughs> yep. uh, yeah. We've never seen the light, and now, uh, and now well, it, it's it's. <laughs> You kind of see the light now, but it's a big giant glowing Microsoft logo. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yes, okay. So we covered all of our points except one. Except what one. the hell is Elop actually talking about? <laughs> and um, and <laughs> will Windows Phone actually go anywhere? Yeah. Where? Let's talk about that. Let's talk about what the hell is Elop talking about? Is do okay. Arthur, start, start talking with you. Starting with you. Do you think Microsoft has any strategy over here? And then we move on to Alvin's thoughts on that. Uh, I think Microsoft must, might be having a strategy underneath all the meetings and the conflict. I mean, Microsoft is an organization which is huge in itself. And I mean, one person might want something, 22 other people might want something else. So if mm. I don't know how, what they're going to implement, how they're going to implement their smartphone strategy. What do you think there definitely is some strategy out there, somewhere inside? Someone must be having a strategy. Mm. What do you think, Al? All right. I feel like the Microsoft has never been successful in mobile at any point in its history. There's nothing that tells me that this time they will find their success. I love Windows Phone, okay? I, I think Windows Phone is a Stop great. Stop saying that. Every time you say that, <laughs> something bad happens with Windows Phone. Stop. Just stop. I, I really <laughs> enjoy using my Windows Phone. But I feel like it is a product that's always threatening, that's always being threatened to become worse rather than better because of whatever Microsoft wants to do with it. It's like they made a great platform that has been mismanaged um, in many ways. And so, it, and why do I say that it's been mismanaged? Because when Microsoft was charting Windows Phone strategy, they were saying things like, single core processors are fine. We don't need dual core. <laughs> um, they were also saying things like, who needs expandable storage? And then later on, they did dual core CPUs, and they did expandable storage. And they also ripped out the whole core of their Windows Phone 7 OS and replaced it with another one, just because. Um, and because they had to do that, that was a transition in itself on the Microsoft side. And then after that, they decided, OK, 
we don't really appeal to consumers with Windows Phone 8. Why don't we make it about productivity and then all the slogans about Office and about email and about uh, <laughs> OneDrive came out because you, you forgot you forgot the first thing which was let's appeal to moms and then they went on to okay let's appeal to office people now. Yeah. <laughs> so kids they, So they made statements at the they made statements years ago that they would re, re that they would redact uh, that they would take back. Uh, in favor of a new strategy that they just thought out that may give them another chance. And then after that, they were like, okay, no one's buying our flagship Windows phones. We need to reposition Windows Phone to be the low end operating system. Mm. And so now we get a lot of low end phones. Um, so it's just insane. It's just, it can be seen from Windows Phone 8.1. Oh, let's make the OS unique with hubs. Let's make everything very pretty and everything kind of work together in synergy with Windows Phone 7 and Windows Phone 8. And when it came to Windows Phone 8.1, hubs didn't really work. No one's really building into them. Let's, let's change all the hubs into apps. So now, they are just apps. They are like Android. You have literally ripped out all the... Microsoft, you've literally ripped out all the things that made Windows Phone special in order to present a more Android-like user experience where I'm just jumping in and out of apps again. So is so given how much they flip-flopped and, and, and waffled around with Windows Phone strategy, um, I have no confidence that they will be able to do anything worthwhile with Nokia whatsoever. And the thing is, and when Nokia and Microsoft first announced that, that they would be joining together um, in an acquisition, at that point, I already didn't feel good about it at all. Especially since Nokia, for most of its uh, four years with Windows Phone, seemed to have much more sense than Microsoft in doing whatever it did. Right? When they realized that um, Windows Phone wasn't going anywhere at the high end, they differentiated with hardware like that 41 megapixel camera. They had to do it because otherwise there's nothing setting apart a 920 from any other high-end Android phone or even a mid-range Android phone, because when the 920 came out, it was already kind of mid-range. Um, <laughs> it's So, is there a strategy? If there's one, I don't see it. Right now, they are, right now they are um, talking about productivity and talking about low-end, but product, people who value productivity are not low-end smartphone buyers, and people who buy low-end smartphones don't care about Office and don't care about all that stuff. So I think that they, that Windows Phone and Microsoft strategy for it and Nokia is flavor of the month. Where is it growing now? Oh, we'll shift there. <laughs> uh, I love that. You, I love the way you put it. Um, I read two very, very, very nicely written articles. One by O. Malik and one by uh, Charles Arthur from the Guardian. Um, I tweeted both the links to to both of those articles, and they were really well written articles. Um, I think Charles very correctly pointed out that um, Elop hasn't successfully led Nokia at all, in at all. So why is he still the head of that division? <laughs> it just defies explanation. Um, and 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 he and he gets to call the shots right now. And this is one of the shots he's calling. It just makes no sense. Um, I I I really 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 don't understand what. Microsoft is up to. Uh, I, I feel like this is kind of going to work against them. Finland is already pissed. <laughs> I don't think anybody in Finland is going to buy a Microsoft product in a very long time. Uh, I think MacBook, sales of MacBooks and iPhones and iPods and... I, I'm sure the Apple. Finnish government isn't going to strike any tech deals with Microsoft anytime soon. Yeah, I think that's about it. <laughs> Uh, why? I mean, why would they? The Nokia was their like half, like most of their GDP was was Nokia. Yeah. So, <laughs> so why but would they? The 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 thing that I'll say about the Finland side of it is that, in speaking to for for people who have been there and for people who've spoken to 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 people on the ground in Finland, it seems like they have managed to. It's like they knew Nokia was in trouble for a very long time, and. And so they, for on their own part, decided to invest in building startups and invest in, in establishing new businesses in order to become less dependent on Nokia. That happened a while ago. 
and 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 that's why, uh, and in even for programs like not just Bridge, uh, uh, program, that they did when they let the Mijo team draw and the Simbian team draw and everyone draw, um, um, they, the they offer a Bridge program that helped uh employees uh build their own startups. That's why we have Yola now, and no matter what you think about um, about Yola, um, at least. They're still trotting along doing their own thing. They may be a niche Yola player, but not Yola everyone needs to be a mass market smartphone vendor. Yola is launching in India, and that's huge. I was like, what? Seriously? Wow, that's uh, that way to go, Yola guys. Um, maybe would've, if they would have thought that Yola would last longer than Nokia. I, exactly. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, we all we all saw the launch and we we're like, okay, uh, but now they're the only Finnish manufacturer. Wow. wow, um, so, <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't think Microsoft has any idea what they're doing. I, I just feel like they're trying to experiment with things here, and um, like like Atif said, I'm sure there is some strategy somewhere in there, but I just don't know what it is. Um, and like Alvin said, <laughs> it's just going to be a lot of low-end Windows phones now, which is uh, insane. Look now. Let's go into that because I would like to ask the question whether if Windows Phone is going to go anywhere now, given that everyone's really focused on the low end. Okay, no. Uh, I have a big rant about this as well. Microsoft just signed on a bunch of OEM partners for Windows Phone. They are all exclusively low end uh, hardware makers. Names like Micromax, uh, Spice, um, Blue, um, tons of names I've never heard of, and they are all making low-end Windows phones, right? Nokia is now saying, "Oh, we are going to focus on low-end Windows phones." Nokia is owned by Microsoft. Can you see where this is going now? Can you? It's insane. It's even more insane than Surface because, for at least for Surface, Microsoft's plan with that was to make higher-end PCs than most uh, OEMs of PCs are making, so that there will not be such a direct competition with them. Nokia now is going to become a player that is focused on the low end, just like every other Windows Phone OEM that has just signed on. Imagine that. <laughs> um, How well is that going to go? It's 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 you know what it's it's sad to see but I I have to say I really wasn't surprised because I I, I kind of knew this was gonna happen. Man. Also, is there any profit to be made from the end phones? Everything has yeah, every very little in the industry has told you there is none. There's a reason why Apple is not worried, even though it only has maybe fourteen percent of smartphones, uh, of smartphone market share worldwide. It's because they make lots of money on each one. They don't have to sell <laughs> so many in order to be as wildly profitable and be the billion dollar business that they are. Samsung makes both flagship and low-end phones. Arguably, they make more low-end phones than flagship phones, but that's also because they want to have an aspirational device right at the top, even though they know that probably for most people buying their phones, they'll get the low-end and mid-range ones. But having a flagship phone there allows them to be mentioned in alongside Apple in the US market and in the UK and in Europe where high-end smartphones are popular. So Samsung has something for everybody. There's nothing wrong with that even though I don't particularly like Samsung phones. So, okay. they Can we will... Look at it this way? Uh, the Lumia 520 was better value for money than the Android counterparts of that time. And that's why it sold a lot ton of devices. After that, Motorola's come up with their mid-range and low-range offerings. And other manufacturers have come up with Android offerings, which make the Lumia 520 not as good a buy as it was at that time. Exactly. Now with Android, Android, one. Android 1 coming up from Google, uh, Microsoft really needs to heat things up in the low end if they want to still compete in that range. What they're doing right now isn't going to cut it. With the new what? Android 1 program, when it but, came out, I said that now Microsoft is going to be in even more trouble at the low end mm -hmm. because people who buy low end care about apps. Android will give you the apps. Um, Windows Phone will not. Uh, with Windows Phone, you are really 
having to buy into whatever Microsoft has to offer you because much of the appeal of, from, of Windows Phone comes from first party offerings rather than third party ones. So th that's very interesting because because um, show, show, show me, show me, show me, show me, show me, I, can, I cannot pronounce that company's name in a straight face. Xiaomi launched in India this week and they've priced their phones very competitively, very, Amazing. very, very competitively. Um, if they can give you a Moto G at a Moto E price, why buy the Lumia 520? Why buy, why the, buy the Lumia 630? Because the 630 is a crock of nonsense. Exactly. So, so now we're moving into a point where Android is becoming real value for money even at the low end. So where does Windows Phone belong now? That's another problem. Nobody really knows what is Windows Phone's killer feature. You know, flavor of the month. Now low-end strategies and don't work. They go <laughs> yeah. switch to another one. <laughs> Interestingly, brands like Micromax and Carbon are playing both sides of the game. They have a direct tie-up with Google for Android One, yeah. and yeah, they have a tie-up with Microsoft. This is something Nokia could have done themselves, but they said no. I, yeah, exactly. Control. Like, like, ah, uh, man. Missing uh, in your parents. Everybody, everybody uh, on my timeline, uh, a lot of uh, fellow nerds on my timeline were also like, oh man, imagine that one day, uh, like, suppose Nokia had chosen Android, and blah blah blah. The same thing again. <laughs> it's just, it's just that. It's so, a tired argument. Right. So. So I guess we should end the show now, but let's okay. end it with... An oh. interesting tip with uh, the Nokia X2 uh, beat the Microsoft Kin's record for the fastest product to be killed. Uh, it's pretty <laughs> well, serious. Hey, okay. technically, technically, it's not killed yet. Uh, it, might, <laughs> it might be released. If they launch it somewhere, I, I want to be at that press conference. Yeah. It's going to be the most awkward it. press conference ever. They will probably right? launch it in Kazakhstan again. <laughs> <laughs> Oh <laughs> um, yeah, the, the two people that actually watch the show in Kazakhstan are probably going to be really pissed off now. Yeah, but, but you know, but if, hey, they'll have an, they'll have an X2 to play with. So if that's, they that's, if yeah. they launch in Kazakhstan, they'll have they'll be able to say that they launched the phone, but no one will know about it. <laughs> I'm sure, like. There are some people in Kazakhstan. I can't even pronounce that either. I, I'm really bad at pronouncing things nowadays. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, let's end the show with the most important question uh, on my mind. Is Nokia now finally dead? The Nokia that we know, at least. What do you yes. think, Arthur? Definitely. Yep. And that's it. That's, <laughs> that's our show. This is the, uh, the one where Microsoft killed Nokia. Um, as always, guys, we appreciate your feedback. Let us know what you think of this whole situation. If you think that the remaining part of Nokia, the one that wasn't acquired by Microsoft, the one that launched a launcher <laughs> for Android, if they might be able to do something, or maybe... You know that Nokia sure? that wasn't acquired by Microsoft now looks very healthy and very good. I know, right? Yeah, <laughs> I mean... <sighs> it's just, it's you know what, it's sad. So that's our show. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching, people. As always, we appreciate your feedback. Let's Don't know. ask us how to install Windows Phone 8.1 on your Nokia X. Dude, somebody <laughs> asked me how do I install Windows Phone 8.1 on on the, the Excel the other day, just the other day, <laughs> just the other day. Somebody sent me an email saying that, and I'm like, how oh, do man. I explain to these people what they've chosen for themselves? <laughs> Right. Um, I feel bad for Nokia X people. I feel more bad for Nokia X people than I feel for Nokia N97 people in 2014. <laughs> like at least the N97 people are happy. They they know they're not getting any updates. They know the apps they have are the only apps they'll ever have. But Nokia X people are like happy and innocent, and they're going through life thinking they'll get all these apps and updates <laughs> to improve things. But no. This is the end of the road, and I f and the current Nokia X devices won't even get updated to the new Nokia X X2 software. Who even knows that the X2 software exists anymore? Oh my God, this is so complicated. We should end the show now. All right, <laughs> this is the official end of the show. Thanks for watching, everybody. As always, you can follow Arthur, Alvin, and I at the Twitter links that I'll leave below. And yeah, that's about it. Let us know feedback, uh, whatever you think, in the comment section below. Catch you next week. See ya.